This is E.T. here to talk about the two heaviest pro wrestlers to appear together in the ring at the same time. Now, as I've harped on before, strength and hypertrophy, that's muscle growth, are possible if you're not chemically enhanced only by putting on adipois or fat. And yes, you'll get more muscles, but you're going to be fatter. And fat has health problems, as we'll talk about in a moment. This here is William D. Calhoun, a.k.a. Haystacks Calhoun. That was a moniker he adopted after he appeared on Art Linkletter's house party. That was back in the 1950s. Some of you may remember that show. What he did was toss hay bales very high into a loft and thereby adopted that name. Calhoun was notable for his beard and horseshoe necklace that rested atop giant overalls, and also for his prodigious strength, if not endurance, as a pro wrestler. Calhoun was pretty large even as a boy, and by the way, I'm going to post kilograms on the video. He weighed at age 14, 300 pounds. And by the time he was 20, 21, he was 600 pounds. As a wrestler, Calhoun grappled with pretty famous opponents, including Don Leo Jonathan and Dick the Bruiser, E.T. met him once, and Mountain Man Mike. But his most remembered bouts were with Happy Humphrey, who was even larger than Haystacks. Humphrey was born William Cobb in 1926, he still holds the record as the world's largest wrestler. In the ring, he would average in body weight about 750 pounds. At one time, he stepped into the ring at 900 plus pounds. As a boy, Humphrey worked on a farm, and he was pretty well known for his strength. In 1953, he began wrestling as a pro, and his first bout was with a bear. Now, E.T. knows a little bit about humans grappling with bears. Back in 1963, E.T. had a, an army pal named Peavy. Now, Peavy was as wide as he was tall, and he was strong as an ox. And one day, he took on a black bear. Fortunately, it was muzzled, and the claws were covered. This was at a fair in a little town called Trainer in Iowa. The bout lasted about, oh, five seconds. Peavy was out cold, flat on the ground. No record appears available detailing Humphrey's bout, but we've heard that it lasted nearly half an hour. Like Calhoun, during the same period, Happy Humphrey met an assortment of famous wrestlers, including NWA world champion Harley Race, about whom more later. But like Calhoun, Humphrey never got near a world title. His biggest and still remembered matches were with Calhoun. Actually, it was a series of bouts promoted by Vince McMahon Sr. He's the father of, well, this guy here being taken down by, well, somebody else you might know. The bouts took place at Madison Square Garden, and there was major publicity about them. Cars driving both men throughout Manhattan. They had their seats removed and extra shocks put on. It was all hype, but the hype worked. A lot of people went to see Humphrey versus Calhoun. Most of the bouts were won by Calhoun, usually because Humphrey, if thrown from the ring via a belly bounce, seldom could climb back into the ring in the requisite 20 seconds. Now there's a reason I'm mentioning these two. There's a lesson to be learned from both Humphreys and Calhoun's physical condition. As I said before, without chemicals, the only way to get progressively stronger is by getting heavier, and that's usually with accompanying fat. But that fat presents an overall health challenge. Humphrey was so fat, according to future champ Harley Race, 
that Race, who worked for Humphrey when Race was getting into the business, had to scrub Humphrey's whole naked body with liquid soap and a mop and then rinse him off with the hose. Once Humphrey got stuck in a phone booth, eight policemen were required to get him out, and he was stuck in a New Orleans theater seat, and that took welders to come in and cut out neighboring seats. In the 1960s, Humphrey was one of the first to get liposuction. They removed 100 pounds of fat. Unfortunately, he gained it back quick. When Humphrey reached 900 pounds, he had to retire because of heart problems. He could walk only a few steps, then had to rest, and that required two strong chairs. Calhoun, although slim in comparison to Humphrey, slim at 600 pounds, suffered from health problems too because of his weight. By 1986, Calhoun had lost a leg because of diabetes. He would die in 1989 at the age of, well, only 55. Not that everybody mourned Calhoun's death. Yeah, he was known to harass some wrestlers after the show. Humphrey, by contrast, was pretty much loved by his peers and by the fans. But Humphrey, too, died too early at the age of 63, and it was of obesity-related problems. But unlike Calhoun, Happy tried to do something for his health. I already mentioned liposuction. Later on, he would check himself into a Georgia medical unit, and he was there for two years during which he would drop weight. When he went in, he weighed over 800 pounds. Now, during the two-year period, he was administered three low-calorie diets. The first was high-protein, the second high-carbohydrate, the third high-fat. Now, as the doctors discovered, the best diet for weight loss was the high-protein, if you're determining the amount of muscle retained as opposed to fat. Humphrey lost, in that two-year period, 570 pounds. When he walked out, he weighed only 232 pounds. Now that remains, I believe, a Guinness World Record. Unfortunately, Happy Humphrey regained the weight. Well, not all of it. He went up to 600 pounds and he would die of a heart attack in 1989 at the age of 66. This is E.T. Did you like or dislike this video? Hit the like or dislike icon. Do subscribe. Write in your comments below. Thank you.